Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to build the descriptive statistics in Excel. So um, what you have done so far in your project is you started with a random sample. And once you did your random sample, you collected your data for in-state tuition, out-of-state tuition, your average um, dollar amount of financial aid, the proportion of students receiving financial aid, your enrollment, and your overall graduation rate. So the purpose of this project is for you to build a descriptive statistics report for each of these six categories. So I'm going to show you piece by piece how to build it for one, and then you have to continue doing it for all of the rest. But if you use the commands in Excel, it's very easy. Okay. Um, so the first thing you would do is you would click this plus button to get a new sheet. Um, this one will be labeled as sheet two, just because of the fact that um, I already have a sheet one. I'm not going to start from scratch on this one. I already have everything filled out. The descriptive statistics mean I didn't want to make you watch me type all of this information. So you would pause the video and you would type this in here. Okay. Um, right now you can't really see everything. It kind of goes off the screen. So you can drag your column widths in order to fit your headings so that it looks better. You want to make sure that you can see everything. And as you build a new page, you're going to have to do this pretty much every time. So you can adjust the widths to make sure that your data and your headings fit within the widths of the column. All right, so now that I've adjusted the column widths, I need to go and get the data that I want to be working with. So right now I don't have any data that I'm working with, so I'm going to go back to my data and I'm going to build this for in-state tuition. So I'm going to highlight this information and I can either hit right click and copy or I can do control and C. Um, another thing, if you don't like dragging it down, what you can do is you can go to the top of the data that you want to work with and you can hit control shift and the down button. If you have a Mac, it's command shift and the down button instead of control. Okay, so again, I'm going to hit control and C and I'm going to copy this information. You can see that it has um, a box around it that looks like it's moving and that tells you that you copied it. So then I'm going to go over to sheet one and I'm going to paste that information. I always just hit control and the letter V in order to paste the information in there. So I've pasted it in there. I do want to come down here and rename this sheet so I know what I'm talking about. So this one is in-state tuition. So again, in order to do that, all I did was right click on it. So all you have to do is right click and hit rename. Sheet two, I don't need that one, so I'm just gonna right click and I'm going to delete it. All right. So something that you can do is you can change your font colors to make it stand out. So if you want to use a different color, um, rather than just using plain black and just making it where it doesn't have a lot of color, it doesn't really pop out at you, you can go through and be creative with this. So you might want to go through and highlight all of this information and make it bold. And then if I right click on it and I go down to format cells, I would come over normally on your first time you would be on number and you would just go over to fill and you can choose the color that you want to fill it with. Maybe you want to fill it with this color and then you can see that it fills in those to show you that this is a heading. Okay. For this part down here, I may want to use the same font color as I did for the descriptive statistics. That way it kind of all goes together. And so all I'm going to focus on in this video is finding the mean, the median, the standard deviation, the minimum and the maximum. And then I will do another video that shows you how to build the frequency distribution. All right. For the mean, remember that the mean is also the average and in Excel, the formula that you're going to use is the average. So you're going to type in equals AVE, and then I'm just going to click on average. And then you have to tell it what data you want to find the average of. So I want to go from A1 through A25. So I can either type in A1 colon A25. I can click it with my mouse, um, especially if you're doing this on a laptop. It might be easier to click on the top cell and hit control shift and the down button. 
and then it will automatically select your data. Okay, and then after that, you just have to find, hit enter and it will give you the mean. Right now, this is set up as a number. I can change it to currency if I want to. It's your preference. So since this data is dealing with currency, I could go ahead and put the currency in there. If you don't want to deal with a currency and you want it all to just be numbers, that works too. So I don't care. It's your preference. Just be careful about what the cell represents. So in this case, it does make sense to have currency because of the fact that you are dealing with the average dollar amount. But if you were talking about enrollment, it wouldn't make sense to have the dollars there. So just make sure that if you use currency, make sure it's actually currency that you're dealing with. All right, median, same thing. You just start typing in median and then you would click on it and then select your data. So again, you can just scroll down. You can type in A1 colon A25 or you can just go to the top one and hit the control shift and down all at the same time. So again, if you want this to be currency, you can. Um, it says accounting. You can use currency too. That would also work. So it's a matter of preference. If you like the dollar sign next to it, then you can do currency. If you like the accounting where it's over, it's just a matter of choice. Um, standard deviation, you're going to do equals and you're going to start typing standard deviation. You want to use the standard deviation dot S because we want the sample standard deviation because we're dealing with a sample and not a population. Okay, so select standard deviation dot S. And again, if you don't like selecting, you can just do the A1 colon A25. And that's another way. So you can actually type it in if that's easier for you. You just do whatever's easiest for you. Okay, standard deviation has the same units as the data. So again, we could use the currency or the accounting. The minimum is your minimum value. So we're going to do equals min. And that is another formula that is stored in Excel. And so then you would just highlight your data equals min. Again, if you want it as accounting, you can, but just make sure that you're watching for it. If your data is enrollment or proportions, it doesn't make sense to have the dollar signs. All right, and the max. You would do the same thing as the other ones and then hit enter. And again, just to, for consistency, let's go ahead and do the currency or the accounting. Okay, number of classes, you can choose six or seven. That's up to you, and you would just type that number in. So I'm going to use six classes, and like I said, I'm going to end this video here because all I wanted to show was how to do the descriptive statistics. And in the next video that I create for you, or the next video that you will watch, will show you how to do the frequency distribution. Hope this helped. Please reach out if you have questions.